Yo, yo, welcome to the NS9 post game show powered by Permanent Brothers. I'm your host, Anthony DiNardo. With me, we have Tyler. Tyler, we do not have any free sandwiches today. Fortunately, it's a Pirates loss, four to three to the Phillies. Lost in the bottom of the ninth there. How you feeling? That hurts, man. That it's one of those games you feel like you really hadn't, you had it in the bag. You got to the bullpen. You got to the spot where you have the strength of your team to lock it down, and it just didn't work out today. It's baseball, man. Yeah, it is baseball. Um, it just wasn't a a great baseball game. Again, opportunities Pirates missed out on. I mean, they capitalized in areas. Oh no, Cruz hit a home run today. That was yeah. nice to see. Get back in there in the power. Uh, he's been struggling recently. Uh, that was a, a an opportunity to capitalize. Took the lead there, held it for a while, and then a lot of missed opportunities to capitalize even further offensively. Um, and then obviously with a pitching game was tied, they lose it in the bottom of the ninth there. But I mean, the day starts out with Marco Gonzalez, so he makes the start today for the Pirates. Uh, he goes pretty effective, by the way. So six innings, yeah. two earned runs, six hits, three walks, five strikeouts. He did have the home run to Kyle Schwarber, which was a no doubter, but um, and then again, like this is kind of what we're talking. We talked about you and I were on the show last night, Bailey Falter, right? But this is the the recipe we talked about with you know Gonzalez and of course with Martin Perez, and it's like if they're going to be successful, it's going to be these type of outings. And mm -hmm. I mean, Marco Gonzalez gave you essentially what you you signed him. Well, not even signed him; you traded for him for uh to do. I mean, he pitched he pitched well, well enough. Yeah, like. I don't know how many strikeouts he ended up with. Five, six? Five. Five? Okay. So he had five strikeouts, five ground outs. He's a guy without really good stuff. And to this point, he's found a way to get outs very effectively, but not, the, not to a point where it feels like the other shoe's going to drop here because the ball's getting hit hot, hard off of him. But he's still able to get the ground ball. He's getting the swings and misses that I didn't think we would see. So I'm very mm -hmm. thankful for that. And really, he's just mixing it up really well right now. And truthfully, that's a credit to Henry Davis. Henry Davis is doing a very, very, very good job of managing this pitching staff to this point. And obviously a lot of it goes to the pitchers as well, because they have to throw what they're called. They have to shake everything that goes into it. And the coaching staff comes up with the game plan. But to this point in this season, I feel like Henry Davis is maybe not getting enough credit for what he's doing behind the plate because this pitching staff in general, we're talking about a Martin Perez, not like terrific stuff. Marco Gonzalez, not terrific stuff. Even you look at a Jared Jones who struggled in the minors result-wise. These are guys that are getting outs very effectively. And the guy behind the plate is just seemingly not getting much credit for that part of it. But it just it just feels like the Pirates are keeping guys off balance. And we saw that from Marco today. Yes. Changeup was really effective today. Yeah. Um, and you talk about the hard hits. Now, granted, he had six hard hits. Two by Schwarber, which Schwarber was fantastic today two by trey turner it's trey turner and two by nick castellanos everyone else was very weak contact um so like yes there were hard hits there and of course one went out the park right with shorber's home run that we you know we just earlier just talked about but um it, it wasn't like he was getting like hammered like he wasn't just getting hit hard over time over time and time there was still like a lot of weak contact in there as well um but, but you're right I, I think what's been most surprising is the swing and miss stuff early on so far yeah uh and you mentioned that like today he had 11 whiffs nine by the change up by the way um 
he's just again like you expected him to be like the number four star number three or number four basically and what he's done so far in his limited time he's he's a reason why this rotation actually looks good I mean, martin perez is a big example of that jared jones is certainly a big example of that i'm sure mitch keller will come around bailey falter right has had really two good two really good starts and martin or and uh, uh gonzalez has had He's been effective every time. I mean, he looks yeah. good. Yeah. I mean, pitching wise, they've done everything you could have hoped for. They've kept them in almost every single ball game. There, there are other issues that just didn't come come to fruition today. Yeah. Now a lot of it is the offense. I mean, the offense came out blazing the first week and it's cooled off some, and it seems like it just cools off more and more and more. Um Today, the, I mean, that the top of the lineup looked pretty solid. I mean, Brian Reynolds, Cabrian Hayes, they were getting the job done. Uh, but um, four walks between the both of them, by the way. Reynolds walked three times. <laughs> um, but just again, like talk about like just couldn't couldn't capitalize. Still, a lot of strikeouts for this team, and I think I counted. Well, there was what ten strikeouts in total. I think I counted. I'm trying not to go overboard on this, but six strikeouts where they were just caught looking. Yeah, yeah, we we, we know my tweet that got a little bit of attention there, but really? like it, it seems like it's this Phillies series. It's it's certainly been exposed so far. Yeah, it's been bad, and really, it's it has expanded beyond just this Philly series because we talked time and time again during the offseason about the power of this lineup. When they're not able to hit the ball out of the park, they're not that effective. And we yeah. saw we saw O'Neill Cruz hit one today, but really, we're not seeing the long ball like we probably should be. Right. And I I do really think that part of that is because of the pitching matchups that they've seen. Mm-hmm. There's been so many lefties, man. Like all they've seen is lefties, but right. at some point. You have to hit home runs, and they're not doing it to this point. No, that that's one thing that you talk like you mentioned, like this offseason. Something that's kind of inspiring is the power that can be with this lineup, and we haven't seen it yet. And it's not like it's the end all be all. It is early. The bats could potentially warm up. You know, their approach that they're taking what's given them that they've been again not so much recently, but they've been hitting the ball all over the place. So like. We'll take that. And you mentioned like facing a lot of lefties. This lineup's probably going to be at its best with righties on the mound. So like they haven't been at their strength either. Though, like again, like we were talking about, O'Neill Cruz did hit the home run today. Who was it off of? All righty. <laughs> uh mm-hmm. right. So yeah, like they've been at a disadvantage for the most part as far as like who they faced so far up to this point of time in the year. Um, they've overcome it mostly, but it just seems like, yeah, like right now, these bats are just ice cold, striking out way too many times. And again, my point of view as the coach, you're just looking too much. These these pitchers. Did you just are, really drop an as a coach? Yes, I am the coach, not you, Tyler. You're the pitching coach. I'm the hitting coach. Just let's, let's okay. All right. But I mean, this Philly series, they've been painting the corners. And for some reason, not even painting the corners. Like, I mean, there's some that are like six inches inside, like within the strike zone. That would be the middle, but, buddy. Yeah. But I'm saying, like, it might be like right, not right in the middle, but I mean, it's like it's, six it's inches. Right up. Six inches is pretty large. It's just watching these pitches go and again now. It, it's not, I mean, strike one, strike two. Like, like fine. I can get behind that. You want to work the pitchers. Like, I, I understand that. But, you know, you have two strikes on you. It's time to protect that. And they're just not. They're just going back to 2023 Pirates where they're just watching them go by. Yeah. I don't know. Like, does it almost seem like a little bit more of last year where they were very, very aggressive early? And then something flipped. Things started going poorly. And then it got a little bit more conservative. And obviously a lot of things happened last year. No cruise goes down. Guys stop hitting as much. But maybe I'm just a little bit cautious because I've seen this song and dance before. 
but the it's it, you in 2024 you cannot score runs without hitting the ball out of the park. Plain and simple. You cannot sustain success without hitting home runs. And really, they're not doing it right now. They're not. But the thing is, they're not even getting hits right now because they're just yeah. not swinging the bat. They were aggressive. We talked about the approach. We appreciate the approach because they're aggressive. They're aggressive in spots. They still see a lot of pitches, but they were still swinging the bat. And it just seems as if, like, what we've seen, especially, like, these past three games is much more. This looks like 2023 all over again. Yeah. They're, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't no, want to overreact right now, but I'm getting irritated. No, I, I fully agree, actually. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> I'm going to do it. I already complimented the guy, but like Henry Davis, for example, he's not any better right now. He's doing the same th same things we saw last year. He's pulling baseballs foul. I feel like he made an adjustment. He's seeing more pitches. He's letting the ball travel a little more. And it's helping him to lay off that breaking stuff. But he is, this is what I was talking about the second game of the year when I said he's not seeing the ball well. He's not on time with the fastball. He cannot hit a fastball right now. If you cannot hit a fastball, you can't hit anything. I think we're seeing that through throughout this lineup every here and there, but there's two or three guys right now that they look lost. Henry Davis being one, and he's probably yes. the biggest component of it. He looks awful at the plate. Whatever they did with his approach, it's not working. He's not on time with the fastball. He's laid on all of those because he's trying to lay off of everything that's every slider that is down and away. He's laying off of because he's so laid on everything else. Get the dude on time. There's a there's a bunch of dudes in the same category. Yeah. It is. It's frustrating now. And, and again, like so I said, I don't want to overreact. Like the Pirates are still 10 and 5. I mean, they're still winning, but it is just 15 games. That can change in a week's time. And I'm it's fearful right what now, this little here? slump they're in, as far as the bats go, like it's, I, I don't want to see this prolong. They got to snap out of this. Um, because again, we talked about Marco Gonzalez and how well he pitched. And I mean, this, this team could have easily won this game. Oh, they this very should much have well been a win. Have. Right. This should I mean, have been a win. Jared Jones goes out there, pitches well. You can't capitalize on that. You know, Marco Gonzalez goes out today, pitches well, can't capitalize on that. Just like when you have these guys putting out these performances on the mound. And, you know, again, we're, we're talking like back in 2023 and, you know, previously, like when three three runs just seem like, okay, we, we can't do any better than that. It's a problem. Yeah, it's... <clears throat> Once again, they're not hitting a long ball. They're not sustaining innings right now. The old kick the hand down the road, just keep moving it down the order. That's not happening right now either, and it was early in the year. Five hits on the day. It's not good enough, man. Like it. I get it's a lefty on the mound, and eventually these guys are going to have some off days, and they're 10 and 5. Like, I don't want to really trash them, but. The bats are becoming to are well, starting to become a concern. Yeah, I, I mean, it was already on the mound today, though. Mind you, it was already. Oh, it yeah, was it Turnbull. Was, now they got Turnbull out rather quickly, they did, and, but, then, and then they Strong saw came in as a lefty, and, and he had two innings and struck out five. Yeah, so that's yeah, yeah. They saw they've seen a lot of lefties. They saw some lefties in the bullpen today from the Phillies. It's, right. Ugh. You got to find a way. And that's what stinks. Like that, that is what stinks because they kind of had the recipe for success today. And you know, I guess let's kind of talk a little bit about that, right? Like Turnbull was on the mound today and he's been really mm -hmm. effective and he yeah. wasn't on, he was walking guys. And again, like Brian Reynolds was a merchant of that. He got on base three times today, I think twice from Turnbull. Um, yeah, like actually I think it's back to back, right? Reynolds got on, Hayes got on. 
What are Reynolds they were making, walking three times? Him. What's that? Reynolds walked three times. Yeah. So I think two was from him. It might have just been one, and then he got yeah, the hit. Like, I forget. But teams are figuring it out. Like you don't let those top guys do things, and we'll figure it out at the bottom of the order. But I'm saying like it was credit to uh, Reynolds had a really good at bat, and he, like, he made Turnbull throw I think nine pitches at that point in time. And then again, that's when Hayes came in. So I mean, they were making him work, and they got Turnbull out after four innings. Uh, I think he started the fifth and couldn't get it out, and that's when they had Strom come in. So, like again, like the recipe for success was they got Turnbull out quick, and they went to the Phillies bullpen, which is their weakness, mm -hmm. and the bullpen just shut this team down for five innings. Oh. And like I referred to, they the Phillies seemed to go heavy lefty there in the bullpen, right? Which to this point doesn't seem like a weakness of the Pirates, but really, you're you're putting their best players at a disadvantage. Yes, and you say it doesn't seem like a disadvantage, but the lineup was prepped for righties today. Right. O'Neill was leading off. You had uh, Telez in there. Now, Connor Joe was in the lineup today, but but yeah. And that's the fine line that Derek Sheldon has to walk of, when do I move O'Neill Cruz down the line? And this is a conversation more for North Shore and I live, but when do I move O'Neill Cruz down to six or seven? When do I let him hit lead off against the lefty? That's where these things can come back to bite you. Yes, you're getting wins early in the year, but O'Neill Cruz isn't seeing a lefty as often as he probably should for his development. Same with Jack Sawinski. Some, some of these things will come back to bite you eventually if you're not letting them see lefties as often as they could. Mm -hmm. You're going to dead. Right. Kind of. Yeah, and I, I but... forgot to even bring up Sawinski. Yeah, good point. So like I said, Telez. Cruz and then Solinsky was in this lineup as well. So, like, once the lefties came in, like you're talking about, like it was just, it was done. This team had no desire to do much offensively, it seemed. They just couldn't. They just simply couldn't. Yeah. Uh, but, but again, like that, the, the, the watching the pitches just go by is just, to me, I, I don't mind this approach, but when it is two strikes on you, you have to, yeah. have to, have to protect that plate. And again, what bothered me, What's bothering me is the fact that it, it's not as if they're getting bad calls. This isn't where the, like the ball was like two inches off the plate, mm -hmm. and you have an argument. I mean, these are strikes. These are just plain as day strikes being thrown. They're sitting back watching it. And who was it too? Like, oh, it was oh, was it Henry or Jack? It's probably both of them. That I mean, oh, it was also I think it was Henry Davis. I think it was Henry. There was runners in scoring position as well, and he just watched that pitch just go right by him. Just right by him. Like, just no desire to do it. You have to step up there and swing the bat because that's when good things can happen. It's not going to happen by just sitting there watching strike three go by. Yeah, I think it might have been Henry because he had like a seven, eight pitch was. of bat. Um, and the third strike was right there. Um, right there. Truthfully, this, and I don't, I don't want to make this a, negative Andy Haynes show, but I've complimented what they've done so far at the plate, but I don't know that Andy Haynes has that ability to coach him up enough to adjust to certain situations. Mm -hmm. They're the same guys no matter what. Because That's they are the taking pitches the past no few what. days have been. And it's almost reminiscent to like when Jake Arietta was just dominant. And the Pirates were very, very patient that year. And then you face a Jake Arrieta who's just filling the zone up and he's making you look dumb because you're trying to take so many pitches that you get to a point where you're in a two-strike count all the time. You have to be able, game to game, adjust what your approach is going to be. When a guy is going to fill the zone up, you have to be able to attack early. Because when you're facing someone that's good, you actually need to swing at that first pitch every here and there. So that you're not wasting that first pitch fastball that's belt high. Right. That's my Indy Haynes problem. Is that there's no leeway with anything that's being done. Look at, I mean, honestly, look at Jared Jones. 
it was a third start then, right? Yeah. I mean, that was like a perfect example because you saw mm-hmm. his first start and his second start. I mean, strike one is basically a 98 mile an hour, just center cut. Yeah. And and you saw what happened in his third start. Again, like he fought through and he was able to, to be productive. I mean, he was just, he persevered. He's too good of a pitcher, but you saw what happened. So, again, same thing. They were being aggressive on that fastball. You know, he didn't really have it that day and they were hitting him. That's what you're talking about. Like that in game. So like the broad scheme of things, like, again, we've talked about this approach and I, I like what they're doing right now, but they have, like he says, like this has been too passive right now at the play. They, they need to, to swing a little bit. It's yeah. just at the bottom of me last year. It's bottom right now. Like the in game adjustments just don't seem to be happening. Yeah. Like, you know, who you're facing the next day. You have to know. Okay. Andy, walk around the clubhouse and say, Hey, we got this guy on the mound. We have to be aggressive early. It doesn't feel like they're doing that. Mm-hmm. And we'll we'll find out more as the year goes on. Maybe today was an outlier. I don't know. To this point, I think we've seen the same exact approach every single day, aside from Zach, Jack Sawinski, because I think we have seen some improvement to strike wise. But for the most part, we've seen this team take a lot of pitches, which is good. But every now and then, you got to be able to buckle down and say, hey, this guy's going to fill us up early. Let's swing. Yeah, sometimes you got to zag when you've been zigging. Yeah. God, you said so much better than I could have. Th- I mean, that's... You did. As a hitting coach, that's my yeah. terminology I like to use a lot. I get you need to talk so, to coach. I, I could. I just, I can't. <laughs> I, I, I physically can't. I would love to. But I I can't. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, um, I don't want to go too too much longer with this. The offense was bad. The offense has kind of been bad. The bright spot, yes, O'Neill Cruz hit a home run. Oppo with basically no swing involved. Yeah, do we have, can we just talk about that for one second? Sure, sure. Actually, yes. One second, just the ability that guy has, and it's good to see him in a third home run of the year. Sick. Because I was getting a little concerned that the power was like gonna be gone for a little bit, and then we're gonna see like the five home run week, something like that. The fact that he could hit a baseball that he just completely misses 108 miles an hour the other the way. Third hardest hit of the game. Dude, he missed it. Yeah. He had no idea that was going. The guy's incredible. Wait. Now, granted, part of it's in spring, but that's like what, like the fourth time we've seen that this year where it was, like he doesn't even believe it's a home run and it's out. Imagine if he had a real hitting coach. <laughs> like it, I'm available. I, I, I like a lot of what Andy Haynes brings. I like the patience he brings, but he at this point to me seems like a one size fits all approach to everybody. I don't know if he really improves anybody. If there was somebody that could maybe tap into that O'Neill Cruz potential all the time, when he misses baseballs, they go over 100 miles an hour. Yeah. They do. Well over 100. It's stupid. He flicks his wrist. <laughs> and, the ball, and the ball goes like my mic. Look at the flick of the wrist. He does. I mean, again, that's why he's so talented. Now he has to connect more. What I'll say is, I mean, the Andy, the Andy Haynes effect, I think, has been beneficial to Ono Cruz. I think we're seeing him chase less this year. The strikeouts are still a problem, though. And I mean, again, like the majority has been lefty, so it's a problem. But again, like he's just he's just not making contact. Like that's his problem. He's just not making contact. He's laying off some pitches. So I'm also ready to, you know, I'm not too concerned because it's been a lot of lefties. He also, actually, you know what? Can I take you through a moment in my mind at that at bat? So when he was up there uh, swinging, I swear to God, my mom was thinking, I'm like, this whole thing was processing. And I was saying how the strikeouts are still bad, just like I talked right now. But he has faced all lefties. However, that can't be an excuse. Like, you have to develop. You have to get better against lefties. So, again, like, he is facing them. Like, I'm glad he's at least in the lineup still and such. Right. But, like, you have to to keep doing this. You have to face them. 
And then boom, like he hit that home run. And I was like, oh, thank God. Right. But but yeah, I mean, again, like the strikeouts are concerning, but he's been at his worst for most of the season. However, again, we're talking like the approach looks good. He he's not just swinging and swinging and hacking away at those bad pitches for most of the time. He's he's actually got called out a few times because it's been a bad pitch and got called a strike three, and that wasn't a close one. Like that was to me is like when Kutch isn't swinging, when Jack isn't swinging, that's a problem for me. But like when Cruz is laying off, I actually appreciate that because to me, that's what he needs to work on. And that's clicking for him. So I just wanted to add that in there, I guess, too. No, I agree. Like I like everything I've seen from O'Neill Cruz. And I think almost really, yeah, well, at the plate. I like most of what I've seen. Yes. No, I'm excited to see like a stretch of righties. And I'm sure he is. Yeah. And I'm sure Pirates fans are. To be fair, that this could be good for the entire team. Because there's a lot of left-handed bats. Well, two of them that you count on. That need to be able to hit lefties. And they saw a bunch of them early on this year. Yeah, that's hopefully, fair. hopefully it's a learning curve <laughs> with a cough. Fair, fair. Okay. Well, then let's move on from the lineup. So I think another thing we want to talk about: Marco Gonzalez did his thing. He looked very effective. Six yeah. innings. Seventh inning comes up, top of the order, and they put in Chapman. Now, I tweeted it, so it's actually out there. You and I talked about behind the scenes, actually, even. Mm-hmm. You said yourself, what? This is interesting. I think you said something like that. Yeah, that the that's exactly what I said. Yeah, and I said, as I put out there on Twitter, I, I like this. Going to Chapman right now, I like this. We don't have to worry about, like, you're an eighth inning guy. I mean, how much, mm-hmm. how often do we talk about this in years past, right? Like, putting your best guy in the bullpen in the, like, the better situation, not worrying about inning, and it seemed like they did. Chapman's been hot. You got the top of the lineup. Why go Horderman here? Put in Chapman now. Let's get through the, the best part of the lineup. Make it to see the eighth, and then have Bednar close out in the ninth. Yeah, I I like going Chapman there, because I think he's, at this point, your better arm. I ch- Personally, I trust him more. It didn't work out there. My concern with it was that we're going to be moving Aroldis Chapman into that seventh inning role and just plopping Colin Holderman into that eighth inning role and then bed darn ninth. If they go the way I hope they go, Chapman faces the better part of the order, either seventh or eighth, until Holderman at, until Holderman's at least back to where he was or showing that he's going to be effective again. And he looked effective today, but yes, I, I like it. I want to see it happen again. That's where I'm at. I don't trust the pirates that they're going to stick with that. Well, this is probably like their first opportunity to see it with Holderman being back and they did it. And uh, yeah, I, I guess I'm more on the side of, I feel like this was by intent. This is maybe the idea of how they're going to use the bullpen and less mm-hmm. of just like, you know what? We want to use Chapman in the seventh and Horderman in the eighth. But let's go back to like the signing. I, and again, like I remember I talked about this then. The, the reason I liked the Chapman signing for this bullpen was matchups. Chapman's effect, like there's no righty lefty like you have to worry about. No. It's not like, oh, there's a bunch of lefties coming up or, oh, there's a bunch of righties coming up. It don't matter who the hell's up. Chapman can face anybody. And what he does is he allows you to better suit the rest of the guys. And this is like the perfect example of that. You know, if they are going to use, if they're going to be like, if you take out the save, right? You know, like, like okay, Bednar's the closer. But like, that's like your 1A, 1B as far as like your, your closers on this mm-hmm. team. Chapman's not going to be the save merchant. Right, Bednar is going to be the save merchant, but this closer is going to come in, right? Like Chapman's. If you're going to use him to be at like, okay, this is the uh, 
Andrew Miller. He is the Andrew Miller from back in the day. This is this is the biggest spot right now. Get Chapman in. You save Bednar for the rest, and then you fill the rest of the bullpen pieces where they need to be. That's how they're going to use Chapman this year, which it showed today. Fantastic. Didn't work out today, though. Yeah, it just didn't work today. And it's not going to work all the time. Right. I I like what they did. Honestly, I like most of what they did with the bullpen. I probably don't use Contreras there or, um, God, I'm on a blank on who they brought in before Contreras. Uh, oh, Str- Stratman or Str- Hernandez. No, Strat was the ninth. Yeah, Hernandez. Hernandez. Yeah, I. That's just the major league baseball thing that I have a complaint about. Where if you're a road team, you don't use your closer in those spots. But Pirates didn't do that. I don't like going to uh, Hernandez. Yes, him again. I don't like going Hernandez and Contreras there. I'd rather actually use Bednar there. But major league baseball. Managers don't do that. So, for the most part, I liked what they did with the bullpen. I am curious to see what they do with Chapman going forward. That's fair. Um, But, yeah, Chapman just wasn't effective at all. Just No, just didn't work. Throwing balls, walks two guys, right. But Horderman does come in, like you mentioned. Horderman looks good. So, yeah, that's encouraging looked- to see. Yeah, very very much so. Um, problem with Colin Horderman is that you never know what you're going to get. Yeah. Dude's just so lanky. You never know. <laughs> but he You really don't really know what good. those mechanics are going to do. But it's just good knowing that, you know, of course, he started the year slow. He's on the IL due to sickness. Got himself back up, right? We saw the first appearance he made, the two-run shots, whatever, his first time up. Um, but yeah, he looked really, really good today. So that's encouraging to know. We already saw Bednar pitch last night. He pitched better. So that's encouraging as well. So maybe like Bednar and Horderman aren't like the supreme weak links in the bullpen. They just needed time. Um, Hunter Stratton came in though, and he did his job. He did what he needed to do to yeah. carry this team over in the tied game. But you're right. Then Hernandez came in and he just wasn't sharp. Now, what I do want to say, we started off the show talking about and giving praise to deservingly so. Henry Davis and his catching. Today, not good. Today, not good. And it really shined or did the opposite of shining uh, there in the ninth. Jose Hernandez was throwing them in the dirt, the spin, you know, like he just wasn't seeing it. He wasn't being able to stopping it. It, it, Honestly, the game should have been over beforehand. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I got past him, and then he threw. I don't know what he threw to Hernandez I mean, at home that got past him. And yeah, but when he got past him, it bounced off the brick wall, got right back to him. Like, the first one, not the second. One. Oh yeah, yeah. The first one bounced off him, went in front of him. He didn't know where it was. Yeah. The second one bounced he... and got behind him and off the brick wall. And right, it was placed well. But then he threw yeah. it to I don't know who. It was just a series of bad events. No, it was, but did it really hurt? It didn't. But no, the, no, honestly, it, looked like it was not ideal. Might. No, no, it, it did. It, it did because that that there was the double play ball was was in effect. Yeah, that yeah, first yeah. pass, the guys moved up, and and that's what what hurt. If, I mean, if you can get a double play there, yeah. this game could have carried over into the tenth inning and extras. But that was gone. Mm-hmm. Now you had three outs. Yeah, um, it sucks, but like he's, I think for the most part, he's been pretty good back there. He's not going to trash him about his d- defense at this point because his offense is way more of the problem. Agree. I mean, but like, both it, things could be correct, and he yeah, also be correct. He are. has been really good, and today just wasn't. But it's Henry Davis game out of is faster for me because I like him. Just please hit the ball, buddy. We're begging you. Yeah. So, I don't know. I guess outside of that, I mean, Ronzi did come in. He threw, what, one pitch, game over. I mean, yeah. For the record, I did get a text today to please. I got a text from my cousin Jared today. Please play Joey Bart. 
I'm tired of Davis. So we're getting there. We're getting there with people. Well, there you go, I guess. If that's going to be the barometer. <laughs> well, I feel like we're... Text uh, from well, Tyler. To be fair, that is like my barometer of normal Pirates fans. They're getting a little bit tired of Henry Davis. Well, he has to do better. He's, He's got to be better. He's been bad. Plain and simple, mm -hmm. you got to hit. He's not hitting. And he's not good enough behind the play. He's hitting at Austin Hedges' level. Yeah, got to be better. Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, Tyler, I think that pretty much wraps everything up. The Pirates will not be winning 11 today. They are going to be stuck at 10. Yeah. But uh, tomorrow's a big matchup. Just... You got the rubber match tomorrow. I mean, they could still split the series. Mitch Keller does take the mound, but they are also going to face Zach Wheeler. And I'm telling you right now, you are going into the tomorrow's game with the same mindset, this damn approach you've had. These past two, there will be 15 strikeouts tomorrow. Book it, and this team is losing. You better get aggressive on Zach Wheeler. Yeah, thankfully, I'm not on tomorrow. Neither am I. Whoo, <laughs> let's have a field day, baby. PlayStation. I am done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, they got to attack. Put out Sunday lineups be damned. Put out your dudes. I didn't think about that. And it is a righty too. So put out your guys. Yeah. Let's do that. Let's get let's tie this series. Let's put out your dudes. And I'm fine with Joey Bart being one of your dudes. <laughs> yeah. Just give me your best nine. Whatever you decide that is, give me your best nine. All right. Let's get out of here. Does that yeah. sound good? Sounds cool. great. Everyone, as always, awesome. appreciate it. Glad we could be your therapy today. We'll see you guys next year or next year tomorrow, uh, hopefully with some free sandwiches. So tune back in. Bye bye. Peace out, our scouts. Hey, you all. Thank you for watching. I know we try to provide the most entertaining content that we can, uh, and we'd love to spread it to as many people as possible. So uh, I know it doesn't seem like a lot, but if you could take the five seconds to like this video, and subscribe to the page. It helps out so much more than you know. Thank you, and let's go Bucks.